Uh, here's our new experiment on uh, being able to weld these together using uh, ceramic hot plates here that are heated to about 210 degrees yeah, about 210. centigrade. He's clamping them on, he's heating them up, he's now doing the, the bonding. The intensity on their enough. faces. <laughs> okay, we just did a two, not enough time, but we're again, we're just still getting our feet wet. So we had some good adhesion right at this little nose piece. So let's try that again. Do we have a pig's nose? I've got something that at least is holding together. Yeah. I mean, it'd be interesting to try giving it the now, um, just to try and go over the joint with um, the hot air gun or just smooth it with a hot air knife. Uh, sorry, the hot knife. Well, that's why I was going to just dive it through the whole plastic and just do a suture like heat sutures all the yeah. way through. I don't, I don't want to do surface stuff because that's like once it cracks, it gets away entirely. But that's. Yeah, it's coming off. It's workable. Yeah. So we're on to uh, stage two of joining uh, Piggy Boy's helmet. Uh, we've moved on to what I'm calling the uh, stitching or stapling. Uh, we've already used the heat beds to give us uh, the base adhesion, which kind of helps cure in the, the internal surfaces of the edges. And so now what I'm doing is kind of showing you a step in process here. Uh, so I start by taking the, the fuse form and I basically just start scything it or scoring it across the boundary line repeatedly. Uh, the part was printed with about a millimeter of material on either side of this line, so there's plenty of uh, solid material to drag across. So what I'm gonna do is repeat this action uh, three times, one directly across and then uh, two diagonally, basically connecting all the points together. Uh, what this is gonna do is mar up the surface or kind of destroy uh, this top layer, this top layer, as, uh, as far as I'm diving, and by basically scoring in this manner, I'm mixing the material from both sides into one another, and then when they uh, harden again, they'll cure into a solid form or a solid structure. Uh, so this is kind of the finished, pro the finished side. So here I've already uh, seam welded. Uh, here you can see I'm using it leaves the holes obviously. So I'm using uh, some scrap PLA from a failed part. There's a, a failed piggy nose. So no, nothing goes to waste. So I'm taking this kind of like shredded material and just laying it on there and using the, uh, the soldering iron to kind of just melt that into position. And then eventually I just use it to kind of just smooth it uh, back and forth, back and forth with the heat uh, to make it more uh, true to form. So you can see it's pretty, pretty close to the form there. Um, but it's it's definitely one solid piece of plastic now. So I'm just going to continue this this function all the way around the nose here, and get around the other side, and then on the inside, uh, I'm going to repeat the same process, but not in quite such detail. I'll probably just do one uh, scythe uh, perpendicular, and then blend those. Uh, I believe we're going to be actually reinforcing this with a fiberglass strap from the inside. Uh, the outside needed to be a little less affected visually by the process, so we're just uh, really treating that properly. Uh, the inside we can be a little more belligerent with the quality of work, so we're, we're going to go the extra mile and uh, add some fiberglass to that. So moving along here, uh, we got the hardware. Uh, we got these massive hex bolts that are going to go right there and uh, basically give this whole thing a kind of franken look. Uh, kind of want to keep the stitching because the whole franken concept I thought was kind of fun, but. Uh, Eventually that'll all get buffed out. So stay tuned, we got more uh, more details coming up. So here's the final uh, weld. So if you just look at the lines or the silhouette, it's, uh, it's a pretty good job. It doesn't look nice, but 
but sandpaper doesn't make things look nice, it makes things flat, so uh, the paint will make it look nice. It's nice to finally have this guy in a situation you can actually mount it. So we're going to be moving on, drilling these holes out for these bolts that are like the size of my pinky for that Frankenstein look. And got to drill some uh, receiving holes in the helmet side. So we're going to have to measure and mark those and then uh, drill slowly. Comes in. Okay, we're back. We've done the uh, basically the rough sanding filing, if you will. Um, kind of skipped a few steps on the video. We went ahead and mounted the whole thing. Uh, use these little M screws here. Got a washer here. Got a washer between the parts. And then on the inside, got a, got a nut and washer there. Uh, tried it on, it fits pretty good. The uh, nut and washers don't stick out any further than the studs. Um, like that stud there. So, uh, with the padding and everything in place, we feel like that's pretty good. Uh, Sonard wanted something a little bigger. I think he, he went and got these for us to put in. Um, so, comparatively speaking, pretty, pretty, pretty big. It would basically be this entire feature would be gone. So, uh, opted against that. If he wants this like Frankenstein look, uh, probably would be better just uh, 3D print a bolt head that looks this big and then just glue it onto this. It's like a cap cover and that way he can uh, not have to deal with the inside hardware or that nut being inside the helmet up against the temple. Uh, I'm sure Piggy Boy will like that. Anyway, uh, helmet articulates as planned. Uh, it doesn't move too far as planned. It goes to the uh, just to the eye socket. This internal portion meets up with the eye socket there. So it's really just enough to kind of uh, ease getting the helmet on and off once all the padding's in, and then also allow them a little more vision underneath. Uh, I think this is, I think we kind of agreed this is maybe a little overkill now uh, with the amount of opening there that I can see out pretty good. And uh, I'll see these massive eye holes you can see pretty good. Anyway, so the next stage will be. Uh, discussing the coating, what we're gonna finish coating all this with. Uh, considerations being that there's very thin tolerances in between these pieces, so any kind of coating, uh, we talked about rhino liner or fiberglass or other kinds of like thick treatments, um, although strengthening would ultimately it limit uh, this action here and would possibly cause it not to happen. So uh, it needs to be considered as far as those things are concerned. Uh, but otherwise, piggy boys, ready for the ready for the pig pen. And uh, just give you an idea of size. So there's the obligatory can. So it's not just camera tricks. This thing is huge. One more piece of data for all you who are just really wanting to know if this is a better choice than, say, uh, fiberglass. Fiberglass was how uh, Zupi was done before, and the helmets are pretty heavy and very time consuming to make. Let's go ahead and weigh this up. So, this whole helmet, faceplate, and it's now weigh 2.2 pounds. So, not bad, a thousand grams. Uh, or for you 3D printers, exactly one, one roll of filament, one kilogram. So people want to know what you can print with one roll, one roll of filament. You can print one full-size helmet. That's what you can print with a roll of filament.